Here are five tricks all good paladins know in D&D. One, damage spells. So here's the thing, killing stuff is fun in D&D. So you'd think that spells that help you kill stuff would be great, especially as a paladin. Well, that's where you need to put down that big rusty axe and put on your thinking cap because you're wrong. The great thing about paladins is every spell you have is a damaging spell thanks to Divine Smite. Example, you could cast Thunderous Strike as your bonus action using a first level spell slot. You now have a chance at dealing 2d6 thunder damage and knocking someone back if you hit them. But if you miss and they attack back on their turn and you drop concentration on the spell, you've wasted that spell slot. Instead, you could have just attacked and if you hit, then activate your Divine Smite, dealing 2d8 extra damage. This also leaves your bonus action free for another offhand attack and you don't need to worry about holding concentration. And also, also, you don't need to worry about having a hand free for those pesky somatic component spells need. You can carry a shield. The fact is is that rarely are paladin damage spells better than just saving that spell slot for divine smite, because all the spells come with the drawback of potentially doing nothing. Destructive wave and banishing smite are the only exceptions, and that's because destructive wave is fucking badass, and banishing smite is good because it banishes people, not because it deals extra damage. More importantly though, paladins get some amazing buff, healing, and control spells. Cure wounds, command, bless, dispel magic, revivify, all amazing options that are going to do way more for your party than some random extra damage effect. And then if you need extra damage, you just divine smite. 2. Ranged options Paladins, like attractive singles allegedly in your area, are only good when they're actually nearby. Ranged and flying enemies laugh at paladins, because Divine Smite only works on melee attacks. So finding a way to bitch slap that dragon out of the sky is extremely important. Some races can fly, but none can fly with heavy armor, so that doesn't do as much good. Paladins can also use crossbows, but if you're a strength-based paladin, that's no good either. One good option is the Magic Initiate feat, grabbing a couple of cantrips and a first level spell. Firebolt from the Sorceress spell list is really all you need to blast away from 120 feet using your Charisma modifier. By the way, I was once a paladin who did this in-game, but I also took the Warcaster feat so I could shoot firebolts from the end of my swords while dual wielding. And my DM was like, bro, did you just build a gun in my medieval fantasy game? Because that's fucking rad, dude! Magic Initiate also gives you a first level spell for some extra tricks, like Disguise Self, Sleep, or even Shield. Alternatively, the Javelin of Lightning is a powerful ranged item, overcomes a ton of resistances, and is not all that expensive. A wizard in the party with the spell Fly also does the trick, but the best ranged option of all is the Find Greater Steed spell. As soon as you can cast it, use it to summon a Griffin Bro and fly into battle. However, my favorite trick is instead of going to a distant enemy, make them come to you. Casting the spell Command with the word Heal is both extremely badass, terrifying, and effective. The Rise of Robot Man is brought to you by Micro Center PC. Great, I mean, is everyone ready to start the campaign? Yeah, we're just waiting on shorts to arrive. Greetings, mortals! I am Robot Man! Dude, we said it was a medieval fantasy setting. I like... built myself with parts from Micro Center PC. They have an online community dedicated to helping build gaming PCs. PC means personal computer. It, not play a character. They are also giving away free flash drives and micro SDs. No purchase necessary. I mean, that's not even the... Wait. No purchase necessary, free flash drive and micro SD. Bro, focus. I roll to seduce the barmaid. I am a Warforged bard. I'm so literally a sex machine. How long has it been since Stacy left you, bro? About three months. I am dealing with things well. Really? Robot man has no feelings. Robot man cannot no, no, no. feel <laughs> alone. <laughs> This was a really strange idea. Build your gaming PC with Micro Center. With the best prices, selections, same day pickup, pro assembly, and a free 128 gig flash drive and micro SD for new customers. Pop into a store or join the online tech community by following the link below. Three, 
Battlefield Master. Paladins might be the class that benefit the most from using battle maps because it really matters where that tight ass of yours is planted. This is because of your auras. Paladins get a few and they do something cool to everyone within 10 feet of you. For example, devotion paladins make it so they and people within 10 feet of them can't be charmed. This means that for paladins, abilities which improve your movement get way better. There is probably no better class to be mounted than a paladin because it lets you move around whack stuff and then retreat back to your team to provide some passive protection. The mobile feat is also awesome here, although it can be hard to fit on a build because you've got so many ability scores you need to pump. Finally, I gotta give a shout out to the boys. Enlarge Reduce and Potion of Growth. These are way better on Paladins because getting bigger extends the reach of your aura. A Drow or Fairy Paladin can naturally enlarge themselves to not only deal extra damage, but give all allies within a 25 foot cube access to their aura, which is insane. Four, the mad choice. So the word mad in D&D stands for multi-ability score dependent. This refers to classes that have lots of different stats that need to be high for them to work. Paladins need great constitution because they're up at the front eating shit from the enemy most of the time. So this leaves us with the eternal debates of charisma versus strength or dexterity. Both are extremely important for effective paladins. You want high strength or dex because it means you hit harder, hit more often, and have a higher AC, either through your dex bonus or being able to wear heavy armor. But you want high charisma so you can prepare more spells, be better at social interactions, and most importantly, improve your auras and spell save DC. A higher save DC means your enemies are going to have a harder time avoiding getting banished or shitting themselves in fear when you walk up to them. Also, a charisma score of 20 means hot allies in your local area are getting a plus five to all saving throws and you can have this by level six which is straight up broken if you're aiming to be the type of paladin that can bring the smack down all day long is ridiculously hard to hit and maximizes the value of spells that don't require charisma then maxing out strength or dex is probably the way to go at this point you're a lot like a fighter but with divine smite if you're going for a more versatile build abusing command hold monster cure wounds and child divinity to dictate the flow of battle and also saving your party's ass constantly and also being charming as fuck, then maxing out charisma is for you. The best paladins understand that there is no right or wrong here. You should play what playstyle excites you the most. However, you do want to make a decision and stick with it because if you try and build up all your stats equally, you'll end up overall a lot weaker than if you focused in on one specialty. Five. The Hexblade Warlock Multiclass. Okay, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. There is nothing better you can do for your Paladin build than take one level in Warlock Hexblade Patron. Instantly, it solves all your problems. Struggling to decide between charisma and strength? Boom, you can now attack based on your charisma. You're now all power all the time. Ranged options? Taken care of! You have THE ranged option! Eldritch Blast! And you didn't have to waste a feat to get it. Short on spell slots? Forget about it! Warlocks get packed magic and it resets on a short rest and you can use those slots to Divine Smite. This is basically doubling your smite slots and you can recharge a few every time you short rest. You also get all that great utility Warlocks bring. Take another level for Warlock Invocations and suddenly your options for the build are a million miles long. You can now cast Silent Image at will, hit enemies 300 feet away, deal plus five damage on every Eldritch Blast or abuse darkness with Devil's Sight. The only problem is that Paladins are pledged to a god, whereas Warlocks are pledged to probably a different deity or patron. However, you can get around this little issue by simply not giving a shit. D&D is a game where anything is possible if you chat it over with your DM. Not only is being pledged to two different powerful entities entirely possible, it sounds like the start of a badass character arc, possibly ending with you getting caught in the middle of a war between literal gods. That is not a problem, that is fucking cool. Remember to check out the DM Secret Weapon, the monthly magazine that comes jam-packed with monsters, subclasses, magic items, non-combat puzzles, and a full adventure ready to play to take your games to the next level. You can also play D&D games I run with the whole community there too, link below. Also, like and subscribe and check out other videos on the channel. Bye.